Psalm 82. Psalm 82. This actually points to the judgment day. But even as we look at this, as God rebukes the gods of this world, as we read this, you, you will find the word gods. But it's not referring to those spiritual beings, but referring to those who represent God on earth. Leaders, those judges, those who are in a position to rule, to determine if a person should live or should die. Follow me? Leaders of the nation. And they had been given the authority and they are representing God on earth. But you know, some of them have not been very righteous, not just, not faithful, not obedient to God. And so this, this psalm, it's a reminder, a warning to them. But if you look forward, it can also point towards the tribulation, that period, and now just let's study as it is God alone brings judgment not this gods of the world judging unjust judges verse 1 2 then just judgment verses 3 and 4 blind judges 5 to 7 then of course finally the righteous judge, none other than God Himself. Verse 8. So, verse 1. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges amongst the gods. Verse 1. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. Has this happened yet? Has this happened yet? Not yet. This is a future event at the end of tribulation when Christ shall come again. God will stand in the congregation of the mighty. So this is talking about post-tribulation, the millennial period when Christ himself together with us, the believers, shall rule. He judges among the gods. As I mentioned, if you look in your centre margin, uh, there would be this uh, meaning, the original meaning, judges. Okay, so these are not spiritual be beings, judges. He judges among the judges. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Because the wicked got money. So there are two sets of laws for some nations. There's one set for the rich and there's one set of laws for the poor. And corruption comes in and it works always in favour of the wicked but the righteous, the poor, the needy, they always suffer the brunt of all this. So God is watching. God is compassionate. And He said, How long will you just judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the poor. This is now part 2. Verse 3 and 4. So what must you do? Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. This theme is not new. You read all the way from the Pentateuch. God has always... Uh, I mean, this poor and the needy, they always have a place in His heart. Even though you are a stranger in the land of Israel, God always says, leave something for them. Don't be wicked to them. You know what? They are all His creation. But, but, 
Some people are just so hard-hearted. They will put all these people down. So we look at Proverbs 31. Some people know Proverbs 31 only as the why. The virtuous wife and mother, where can you find? But this is not Mother's Day, so we skip. So we just look at Proverbs 31, verse 1 to 7. Or 1 to 9. What are the what are the instructions God has for the ruler? So let me just run through quickly. The words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. What my son and what son of my womb and what son of my vows do not give your strength to women. So talking to a king, this was I mean, this, this, these are the words of uh, King Lemuel, but it was a mother who taught him. So mothers, your role is important. Teach them when they are young, so that when they grow up, they will not depart from it. So do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink. Lest they drink and forget the law, and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing. I mean, those days, uh, they don't have a mouth in this birth. They don't have any age. They don't have specialists. So, they are in pain and, and, and they are not well. So, you give them strong drink is like a painkiller. You know, put them in, in that uh, drowsy state so they don't suffer as much and wine to those who are bitter of heart wine speaks of what? joy so don't be so bitter yeah, stop eating bitter God. Yeah, take some wine it's good for you let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more Open your mouth for the speechless. Not say they are dumb, but they have no opportunity to speak. They have no right to speak. So you speak, and, and politicians are meant to speak for the speechless. How many of us can go to parliament and go there and complain and say something? But you have been elected by the constituents. You are their representative and the voice. So go and speak for the speechless. In the cause of all who are appointed to die. Well, some have been sentenced to death unjustly. Please speak for them. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Stand up for them. And these were the words that his mother taught Lemuel before he became king. So anyway, in the context of Proverbs 31, the wife and the mother who have a big role to play, important role. So, then those were the instructions from God for the king. So back to Psalm 82. Now we look at blind judges, verses 5 to 7. They are blind. Blind because they are they have lack of knowledge. Or maybe they chose not to. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken or unstable. They walk about in darkness and the foundations of the earth are unstable. Now, it is unstable because it is unstable in the land. It is unstable in the nation, in the country. Why? Because there is lack of justice. You and I wouldn't be able to go to sleep well at night and walk the streets well if there is injustice. But here in Singapore, we are blessed. But here, as we have just read, if it is so corrupted, the judges are blind, then there is really insecurity in the land, unstable. 
Now, I want to highlight also, there are people who are in positions of authority, but they just want to absorb themselves of responsibilities and just wash their hands and so on. And to the detriment of the victims. And we look at Matthew 27. Matthew 27. Verse 11 onwards. Matthew 27. And this was Jesus on trial before Pilate. <coughs> Matthew 27 verse 11. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And so on. And Jesus answered, It is as you say. Now, this Pilate guy, he actually did not want to take responsibility. So he listened, and then he remembered at the feast, uh, there is uh, always the custom must release one prisoner. Therefore, Pilate said to them in verse 17, Therefore, when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is Christ? who is called Christ. For he knew that they had handed him over because of envy. But he is in the dark. He did not know, he did not know what role he was playing. He did not care. He just wanted to follow tradition. And then his wife came along and told him in the next verse, uh, have nothing to do with that just man. Not just that man, but that just man. So you know that man is just. And still, you choose not to do the right thing. For I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. That was warning. They call it providential warning. God, in a providential way, uh, gave a dream to the wife, so that the wife can warn Thailand. But Pilate chose to remain blind. And so on. And then in verse 22, he said, What then shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? He had a choice. But he didn't exercise the choice. They said, Let him be crucified. Uh, and then you go all the way to verse 24. When Pilate saw that he could, do, he could not prevail at all, Rather than a, tum a tumult or a riot was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. He still there saying, you see to it. And then he released the people, I mean released Jesus to the people. And this is a blind judge. Not that he's physically blind, but he chose to be blind. I wash my hand. I, I know he's a just man, but I wash my hands. Don't blame me. Nothing to do with me. And unfortunately, there are some blind judges around. All I'm saying is, if you are in a leadership position, do the right thing. Justly, righteously. And if you have to speak for the speechless, speak. Don't let this be as if none of my business. When you do so, somebody is going to pay the price. Yeah. So let's be responsible in that manner. Now, back to Psalm 82. Verse 6. I said, you are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. You know why? Because you have not done your part. You have not been a faithful steward. But you shall die like men and fall like one of and fall like one of the princes. Fall. And that is that is 
the judgment passed unto these gods, the small g. You know why? Because you don't have the final say. There is a higher authority, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and God the Father has given to Jesus the role that he shall be the judge. So don't judge anyone before his time. So we look at 1 Corinthians 4. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1, um, no, verse 3 to 5. First Corinthians chapter four, three to five. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. So Paul was saying, "Yeah, you know, he, he has been, you know, threatened and imprisoned." brought before judges and so on. It's a small thing. People speak behind his back, the Pharisees and others. It's a small thing. I do not even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself. Yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes. Who will bring both? Who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts? Then each one's praises will come from God. Praise shall come from God. He will judge, and that praise will come from God, not from men. But today, yes, we see people wanting to get praise from men. You get praise from men, you get judgment from God. But we want God, let Him judge, and let praises come from God. Okay? But these blind judges, they shall fall. They shall die like men, and they shall fall like one of the princes. But the climax of this is verse 8. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all nations. Judge the earth, for you shall inherit all nations. Is this, has this happened? Not yet. Future event. So we look at Revelation 11.15. Look at the righteous judge. Revelation 11.15. sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. And this was what came forth from the seventh angel, a vision of the tribulation and the trial. At the end of the day, God wins. You understand? God wins. I I already know the you know, sometimes you read storybook, you all play cheat. Oh, oh, so long. So we turn to the last chapter. Read. Ah, he, he survived. Can read, can read. Hero die and don't want to read. This one, I know the, the end already. All the kingdoms of the nations shall become kingdoms of our Lord and Jesus Christ. 
So it will be the fulfillment of Psalm 82. Arise, O God, judge the earth, which he will judge at the end of the tribulation. For then, for you shall inherit all nations. Amen.